Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome! Alright, this is to continue on with the making your first game, and decided that with this series, I am going to make it to where I'm going to be using the Simple Multiplayer Steam template that I created well over a year ago, that um, will make it to where it is extremely easy for you to create your first multiplayer game, so that you can share it with your friends, and have them be able to join you and play with you. Because, you know, you can sit there and play with, with yourself all you want to, but, you know, it's more fun when you have other people to play with you. Didn't quite sound as good as it could have. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, so... What is it? Why is it? How much is it? Come on, you're starting off um, with a series, you're kicking in and saying, okay, well, give me monies. Well, yes and no. Well, if you don't want your game to be multiplayer, then you don't have to do the multiplayer portions of it. But if you do want to make your game multiplayer, then my template's going to give you the easiest, fastest way to start it off with. And it's going to come in a zip, uh, a RAR file. And, you know, we already had our my first game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this project completely. Um, because we're going to redo this. And I'm going to actually rename it to... No, we're going to leave that as that. So we're going to go ahead and just delete the content inside there. So we can get started and use the same folder. Yeah, you can rename it if you want to, but yeah, no biggie. So what you get whenever you download it is a RAR file. You uncompress it and you can open the project the first time and then immediately close it. Why? You're going to want to go into it and said immediately open it up so that you can see it right here in your My Project section. But once you've gone into it one time from whenever you see it into the, um, the actual folder that you unpack it from, and I don't think I've got a separate folder just for it. I've got it in a different folder. Yes, I have so much crap in here. Um, what you end up with is... Let's go back to my marketplace. Right here. You get your your folder, which is going to be a RAR file. So you take that RAR file, and you right-click on it, and extract to SMST underscore 420. And then inside there, you're going to have this project right here called Simple Multiplayer. Uh, the new version, actually, I think, just says SMST underscore 420. So whatever it is is inside the, the thing. You just run the project one time and then as soon as it opens up, close it back up again. You never go back into it ever again. Never. Ever, 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 ever. Well, how are we going to make a game with it if we can't open it up again? Well, it's because we're going to clone it. So, And the reason why I don't want you going or doing anything to that is just trust me, don't do it. You'll be fine. We're going to right click on the SMST underscore 420, the, uh, the actual project that we created from there earlier and open back up to it. And when we right click on it, we have open, show in folder, create shortcut, clone, and delete. If you hit show in folder, it's going to show you the whole thing. So this is what I've got here. So once I run that project, there it is. So I actually want to do clone. I select the clone button and it's going to be SMST underscore 422. So what I actually want to do is give it a new name. My first game. And I am going to click on Browse. And I want to make sure that it's in the default location, which is in Libraries, Documents, My Documents, Unreal Projects. Select Folder and Create. It's going to say renaming code projects is not fully supported. No problem. It works. Hit continue. Now, it's going to take a little while to do this. Um, just a few moments. So, in the process, I'm going to actually take my game. I'm going to right click on it and delete. I don't need it anymore. It's goner. So, from here on out, we're going to be running from this. Now, Okay, I can just go ahead and, no, no, just relax, settle down, it'll be alright. My first game, 
Now, what you want to do is you want to go to your file explorer and you want to go up here to libraries, documents, my documents, you know, you want to find it here or you can just show in library, either one. And if you do it in show in library, you can just right click on it. I'm sorry, show in folder. It'll open up this. You want to go over here and find the saved folder and delete it. Just trust me, just delete it. So that being done, we can now close that out and I'm going to empty my recycling bin just because I want to stay neat, clean, and organized. So this is what we're going to work in. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that and go into it and we're going to let that load. And I will show you what you get when you get the Symbol Multiplier Steam template from me. So this is only available from me and it's $20 US currency via PayPal only. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here so I can split these out and see them on left and right. And what I'm going to do is it's in the main menu map. I'm going to go over here next to play and I'm going to click this arrow and I'm going to select standalone game. Okay, what this is going to do is it's going to bring it up just like you're playing the actual game. Keys and commands and everything. You get a really simple menu system that you can modify however you want to. See, you get access Steam community thing pops up right there. It utilizes Steam, so you're going to need Steam running in the background. And everybody that's running the project needs to be running Steam in the background. They need to be in the same Steam download region. I'll explain that in just a second. But as you can see, I've got my username and my avatar from Steam is right here. I have the option to play single player. When I hit that, it goes in. Yay. There's much rejoicing. So we can run around and do our thing. We don't have anything in here yet. Hit escape. We get our escape menu. And what I can do is go ahead and add the background blur to this one like we did in the other one. And I can select resume game and just keep on playing. Or I can hit escape and go to main menu. If I want multiplayer. If I want to find somebody else that's already hosting a game, I click on find. If nothing pops up right here, then after a few seconds, then click find lobby. It will search for 10 seconds. And look, somebody else has got a game. Now, don't be surprised if you find other people's games. If you try to hit join right now, it may or may not work. And probably won't work because they're not playing the same game. And the ping, oh my god, it's 9,999. No, no it's not. It's because you don't have a Steam app ID for yourself yet for your project. Until you do, it will not represent an accurate ping rate. So I have it in there. So whenever you do get ready, you can. Um, if you want to join their game, just click on join and it will join into their lobby. Chances are they're not playing the same game as we are right now because it's using the default Steam app ID for development and it's going to show up that you're playing Space War. That's just what it is. So I'm going to click on host and does that mean that this person owns my thing? No, they're just ma they're playing a game that uses that Steam app ID. That's all that means. So I'm going to host my own game call this Beefalo Bart's game and then I can hit make and it will create the game they're both gonna go to the same map and there was much rejoicing this is multiplayer and this will allow your friends to connect like I said it does use the Steam um, region let's go back to the main menu and exit game so with Steam running in the background everything is gonna be lovely so I'm gonna right click on Steam and I'm gonna to go to settings inside here if I'm in the East Coast of the US and I can come over here to downloads and I can see that I'm using the US Charlotte download region now if you're in New York City you can still join this one because you're on the East Coast it's kinda of split up the US is set up in three different regions so if you kind of picture that, um, even Kentucky and all that stuff can, can join with no problems. But if you're in Germany, or if you're in uh, the UK, or you're in Indonesia, or wherever, you can select this, and you can find, like, US, and any of the East Coast, like Charlotte, 
and apply an OK, and that will lock you into your Steam. Once you've changed it, it's going to ask you to restart Steam, which is no problem. And then after that, you'll be able to join with no problem with your development team or your friends, or your buddies, whoever you want to join the game. So that's what you get when you, you get this asset pack, is a playable multiplayer lobby system for hosting and joining matches for them to be able to check out your game. In the assets folder, you're going to get a materials folder, and you're going to get some sample materials. These were based off of Cinti Studios assets that I kind of tweaked around a little bit to try to get some things like black, blue, brown sand, um, different colored sands, grass, dirt, what have you, white and whatever. So you just some, um, if you don't need them, delete them. I, I left them in there just because. Left in two tools. One is a hull tool mesh and the other is a player peg mesh. And I'll show what those are for in just a moment. Um, textures are the textures used for the materials. So that covers the assets folder. In the characters folder, in blueprints, you have player underscore base already set up ready to go and that player underscore base is already set up with oh you asshole sorry edit editor preferences default main window loading saving enable autosave uncheck close kiss my ass go away thank you so it's already set up with a view change system in, in the player character so you get the V key and change between a first person and third person camera. A startup system where it's setting your your player HUD widget, uh, adding it to viewport, setting your input modes and everything else. All your movement stuff is there. I left in the gamepad input and VR just because. And then the escape menu functionality for calling up your escape menu widget. Um, and then it's running off of the event begin play here for your startup stuff. Startup stuff is being run here by a custom event. So that's all there and ready to go. Uh, left of geometry and mannequin folders. You're going to need those the mannequin folder for uh, retargeting to bring in other animations and other characters and stuff. Maps folder, you get a lobby map and main menu map. That's all you needed. A UI folder which should probably be in the assets folder, but whatever. It contains your basic assets, which is your click sound for clicking things in a menu, um, some basic images. Game modes folder is going to have the main menu game mode and third person game mode. HUD is going to have your main menu HUD, which really doesn't do anything, and your player HUD, which is going to be your health bar, which I'll show you again here in just a moment and your your main widgets. The one thing I am going to change is go to my escape menu and I'm going to go to special effects background blur I'm going to anchor this to full screen blur strength 25 I've already anchored to full screen then I'm going to do 0 0 0 and 0 and the Z order is going to be negative 5. So that just adds that background blur to your screen. So again, whenever you hit play, if you want, you can just do it in a new Pi window, a new editor window, but you're going to see that it says go connect the Steam dummy. It means you are not going to be able to get your multiplayer functionality when you're testing it this way. But as you can see, you got a health bar in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. That health bar is working and replicated so if you do take damage you will see that uh, change so that's that again if you want to see the multiplayer functionality you're going to need to run standalone game and if you want to see your escape menu you can use another key for it but I prefer the escape key if you want to change that key I will show you in just a moment hit escape see background is blurred out I can go to the main menu or resume game thing is fine Main menu if you don't want to use the escape key or if you don't want to constantly having to go into standalone game you want to more quickly just go into new editor window or if you just want to do it in selected viewport 
and test out your menus and everything else, you go to your player underscore base, which is your player character, and for escape menu, select that. And you can select here, and you can make any keyboard or whatever you want become your escape menu. Your button to bring it up. I like escape, so that's what I kept. Alright, so now the next thing I want to do is, instead of going to my lobby map, I'm going to go ahead and create a new level. I'm going to go to VR Basic. And this is going to give us a test map to work with. Next thing I want to do is I want to go to my world settings and I want to change my game mode override to third person game mode. Now when I hit play, there we are. We've got a character and a mouse cursor. We can run around and knock these things around, bump into things. That's lovely, right? So I hit escape and it's just going to go right back out and stop that. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab my player start and I'm going to move it. It came up to me automatically in this, but you can also click right there to change your transform for the player start. Now, you can see there's another little small thing that you can't select right there. It's not just happy to see us. We got this to make it go this way, this to go this way this to go up and down and this is a direction we're gonna have our, our, our player start so I'm gonna hit control C on the keyboard and control V and then I'm gonna drag it off of there and now I have a new version of it I'm gonna bring it over here now I want that arrow to face this direction so I'm gonna go to my details panel and look this is set to 45 if I change the rotation to 0 where is it gonna face it that way so let's actually grab this rotation tool right here. Now it's going to go by tens, so you're not going to be able to get 45. So I'm going to actually come over here to the rotation. I'm going to select this, come down to 5%, and now I can select 45 degrees. So now it's going to face this way. So hit play. I'll either start here or I'll start over there. It'll randomly pick between the two of them. Why is that important? Because I want to test the multiplayer functionality of this, I can now select number of players to be modest, just use two, and new pi window. It will bring up two windows. It will default to the client. I'm going to hit alternate and tab, and I'm going to anchor my client here. Now, I can actually resize this window however I want. I'm not going to do this the one time after this. I'm just going to drag this server to a different monitor so that it's easier for me to work with. Because the server will always work, the client may not. So, now my left screen is the server. I can walk over. Normal movement is auto-replicated. There's no problems whatsoever. We can see jumping is just fine. Let's go ahead and park our server here and go to our client. Now, server just kicked that one box and knocked it over. We can see where it went. See what happens when... Oh, well, that worked. Huh. We can knock things over. It could be a bull in a china shop. This is all replicated by default, just by the way that UE4 is working. So we can see we can interact with the ball over here. But, um, it's not right the it's not perfect replication so don't rely on it the server sees that the ball is over here in this corner but the client sees the ball is way over here two totally different locations not to worry with this is not what we're going to keep anyway not the most important thing so, I'm going to change it back to one player and selected viewport. So, when we're going to test things, we're going to test primarily like this for now. But we've got to have our cowboy hat. And again, if you want the cowboy hat, let me know and I will link it in Discord and I'll get that to you. So, I'm going to go to my mesh folder. And let me show you really quickly the um, reason for the player peg. 
and for the hull tool. Okay, the player peg, when you're trying to de determine how wide or narrow something is for a player to be able to get through, the player peg you can just drop down and you'll know that you need a 100 by 100 wide area for them to go into. And if you want to know if it's tall enough for them to walk through, it's 200 high. So I've created this, which is 100 by 100 and 200 tall, which is going to be the perfect size for you to slide in somewhere and verify in your map if a player can get through or not. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Why do I have this one? Is that 300 by 300 by 300? A very monochromatic looking Rubik's Cube. An average hallway for a player to get through, especially in multiplayer, for two people to get by without running into each other. A good width to, to start off with is 300 by 300. So that's why I created those two tools, is so that you can drop those into the map, move them around, and see what's going on. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my ball, this one, my not damn gutter. And I'm going to shift left click on the cube. It's going to select all of those. Then I'm going to control left click on the pyramid. Then I'm going to hit the delete key and get rid of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit save all and save selected. Go to my maps folder and I am going to call this my test map. For those of you who are going to be using this template, then you now have the map template inside here. I'm going to go ahead and hit build so that it has all the test map build data and everything all set up. Lighting build failed. Oh no. Don't have to worry about that. Um, so, if you're going to use it, then one of the things you're going to need to do whenever you want to change your default maps. I don't want to go to the lobby map anymore whenever I select play. I want my characters, my players, and everybody to come to this map. So I need to go to my main menu underscore W. And I'm going to go straight to my graph. Make server button, and I'm just going to scroll in on this. So I'm not showing all of my, my goodies here. And where this says lobby map, if you don't remember the name of your map, go to your map here and select it. Hit F2, Control C, and then click anywhere else. So you've just copied the name of the map. And now you click inside here and control V and there it is. Same thing for a single player. You want to come over here to single player button. Click in there, control V, compile and save. And now when you're playing this correctly from the main menu, it will go directly to this map and no longer in the lobby map. Now you want to go to edit, project settings, as we add more maps in, we'll, we'll, we'll do more with it. Select Packaging, and go to right here, Packaging, and open it up to Show Advanced. Come down to List of Maps to Include in Packaged Build. We no longer need our lobby map, so I'm going to select here, My First Game, Content, Maps Folder, Test Map, and Open. So now it'll only package our main menu map and our test map, and that's all we need. So we are good. Now I want to go to my mesh folder, and I'm going to go ahead and get my cowboy hat. So I'm going to go to the folder where it's located. And if you get it wherever you saved it, just remember where you put it. Do, 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 do. So many things. And wrong folder. That's my cowboy guns. And test exports. And I'm going to drag that in here. I'm going to import and X. So now I can take that and I'm going to rename it, because I don't like that name, M underscore hat underscore inst. So I'm going to do that, and why the hell are you there? I hit the wrong key. And I'm just going to hit the right arrow, and then backspace, so just M underscore hat. And then I'm going to move that to my materials folder, 
move it there, go into my my hat, and it's still showing the same. I'm going to hit save. Good to go. Now, like we did in the other video, we just want to set up our character really quickly to have the ability to wear this hat normally. So we're going to go into our mannequin character mesh folder, go into our mannequin skeleton. If we can't rapidly find our head over here, click on it in here. Right click, we're going to add socket, and then we're going to select that socket, and we're going to hit F2 to rename it. Call this our hat underscore socket. Then we're going to right click on it, and we're going to add a preview asset, which is going to be our hat. We're going to go ahead and rotate it in the 90 degrees that we need to rotate it, and use our translate tools get it sitting nice and low we just don't want it to allow our head to, to poke through so that's actually pretty good All right, so we are all set. We're going to hit save. Now we want to minimize this junk all of there. Go to our characters folder, blueprints, player underscore base. And we need to go to our viewport, select mesh, select test map again, go back to our mesh folder, select our hat, then our player, add component, hat. And now we can select our parent socket and hat socket and our player is carrying our hat. There's a camera stuck to his head. I'll show you why that is in just a moment here. Now we go into play, fall ground. We use a cowboy, got a cowboy hat on. We hit the V key, goes into a first person camera mode and it's not the best we'll work, worry about that later but we can play from first person or we can hit V go back to our third person mode again and we're a cowboy and there was much rejoicing so if you actually went in here and selected two players new pie window and again I'm going to take my server because we know the server is going to work and you cocksucker um, I'm sorry, did he say that out loud? Um, we're going to leave our client right here. Nothing's happening on, on that view right now that we need to worry about. So this is our client. We can see our server and our client both have the hat. No problem. And again, much rejoicing. The jump height. I really don't like the jump height that's default. Because, you know, you're jumping. You think your character is roughly two meters tall or, or roughly six feet tall you're jumping over two meters high or, or over six feet high. To me, I'm calling bullshit. I know I can't jump that high. Well, I can't jump more than three inches. I'm fat as hell and lazy and old. So I know I can't jump that freaking high. So let's minimize all this stuff here and go back to our character blueprint. And... We can go to our event graph. But how are we going to fix that? Character movement seems like a good place. Jump velocity is 600. We can actually, first step is actually lower that down. Let's cut it in half, 300. Hit compile and save. I'll often refer to compile and save as compost and save. But yes, we want to compile and save. And let's go back in here run around it's a little bit lower looks a little bit odd it's like it's uh, forced and then uh, but it's gonna be a little bit more realistic still not perfect but a little bit more realistic go back to our character movement um, air control um, falling lateral uh, friction There's a lot of things you can do to to modify that a lot a lot. 
walking if you want to change how fast they move well let's look as we're running around is that a that's a relatively good running speed yeah realistically that's that's not bad but you have with keyboard and mouse you have one speed run and not run run not run so it doesn't really matter what your walk speed and run speed is there's no way of fixing that but we can go ahead and quickly create our first coolness factor our first thing scroll into this I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in keyboard left shift so now when we hit that left shift key what I want to do is I want to sprint whenever now I can press and release this is probably the method that I'm going to do now but if you want to toggle it when I press left shift I want to be in running mode if whenever I press it again I want to go back into walking mode but okay for this instance I'm going to when I press it I'm gonna run when I stop pressing it I'm gonna walk so I need to go back to my character movement and I'm gonna set my max walk speed to 300 Let's compile and save and go in here this is our walk speed this is our speed this is how fast we go now when it's left shift key I want to sprint or run so this is a normal walk speed you may want to go a little faster you may want to slow it down you do whatever the hell you want to do but I'm going to make this my my normal walk speed say so now what I want to do here is I want to get a reference to my character movement and I'm gonna drag that I left click drag and drop so now I have my character movement and I want to drag off from there and I want to set max walk speed and I'm gonna control C and control V so I have two of them so now whenever I press it we're gonna do this when I release it we're gonna do that and I'm gonna make a little bit neater there so we press it our max walk speed is now 600 when I release it it's 300 I hit the tab key it went from here right to here no problem no fuss no muss connect your character movement to here now another way we could do this is create a variable we could say walk speed is a variable run speed is a variable and let's do that not that it's necessary this will work just fine I'll show you that it works just fine so now we're we're walking around I hit that and now I can run faster when I let go of it I go back to walking sprint stop sprint sprint stop sprint in fact if you want to make it even faster than 600 you go right ahead let's make it 800 make it even faster I would not get crazy with that number because it'll be unrealistic and when you're in multiplayer speed kills multiplayer so at some point you're gonna want a stamina function to start consuming stamina when you're holding down the key and then you can run out of stamina and you go back into walk speed but keep it simple stupid we're just gonna do it right now like this and instead of having the value here and here let's go ahead and create a new variable stuff you're gonna to need to learn anyway so click on plus variable we're gonna call this our run speed we come over here and now a variable type I'm gonna select that and this needs to be a float how do I know it needs to be a float because whenever I mouse over this it says max walk speed float so that's why I want to create this as a float and then I'm going to create another new variable we're gonna call this walk speed it's automatically since I just created this one as a float it automatically created that one as a float but I have no default value so I'm gonna hit compile and save now my walk speed is already selected so I'm gonna set this to 300 and then go to my run speed and set my default value to 800 now I'm gonna compile 
and say one more time. Remember, you are the one that controls that. So I'm going to bring in my run speed. I'm going to left click, drag, drop, and I get the option. Do I want to get or set? I want to get it. But alternatively, and, or control of uh, controlling, hold a control damn key down and left click and drag it and drop it in and you get a git node. You get a git. So I'm going to plug this into here and now what happens if you hold down the alternate key and drag it in there you get a set node. We don't want a set node. We want a, a git node. So I'm going to do the same thing with my walk speed and later on if we need to adjust speeds or whatever like you just got shot and you're staggered and you want to fall back you could set your ma your current walk speed to your speed to walk speed you can refer to this variable at any time you want now and it's because you've got them available you have the ability to call back that you could even set it as a function but worry about that later grow as we go so there we go we have a working sprint feature now thinking about this is this going to work in multiplayer oh goodness not build play change this back to two and new editor window will you work we're on a client we're sprinting and we can't sprint it is absolutely just weirding out it's phasing it's doing weird weird junk I can't sprint but what happens if we the client the server we can sprint all we want to it's working so how do we get that to work at a multiplayer functionality this was such a simple thing for simple player single player and single player is easier to do because you don't have to worry about replication and all that other junk so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect everything. I don't want anything selected. I'm going to go to my class defaults. And I can see all this stuff. My health is 100, my run speed, my walk speed, um, base turn rates. All that is, is visible right here. So replicates is turned on, so that's no problem. I'm going to select my run speed, and I want to make sure that replication is set to replicated. Same thing for walk speed. Replication is replicated. But will that give us multiplayer replication? Well, if you don't know, try. Client still can't do it. Still acting like a weird thing. So that's not going to do it. So how are we going to make this work for multiplayer? So that the clients can sprint also. Ah, coffee. Love me some coffee. Character movement. Technically, this should be replicated also. You're going to have naysayers. Oh, you don't want to change that. Um, sometimes you do. But let's see if that actually does anything. We're going to hit component replicates, compost and save, and see if that does anything. and that's going to be a no so go back to our character movement and we're going to uncheck it for now because it didn't work for our, our porpoises so what we need to do now is let's set this up a little bit differently when I hit left shift I still want to set I, I want to sprint when I let go of it I want to stop sprinting this is the things that I want to do so let's do a custom event we're going to call this client run and I want to go over to replicates and select multicast and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replicate this I'm going to get a reference to my character movement and I want to set my max walk speed so I want to come over here and I want to set max walk speed. Going to connect that there. I want to get my run speed. 
and connect that into there. So this is the client saying, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to do this. Can I have permission to do this? Can I do this? Can I? Come on. Come on. Can I do this? So it's asking permission to do that. Okay. So now we need to do the same thing, but we want to go back to walking. So we need to do another custom event and client walk. Shouldn't really need to do this because, yeah, but we're telling it to stop doing it and go back to what we we're doing before. So essentially, I mean, I can sit here and control C and control V, paste that in there, and instead bring in my walk speed, connect that in. So in theory, I can do it that way. But th I mean, this is how I want to do this. Now, my client walk, I need to make sure that is also multicast. So, we're there. That's what we want to happen, is that. So these things right here no longer need to exist. So now we can't do anything yet because there's nothing plugged into the left shift. So we need to know, we've requested, the server has requested that, hey, this is what I want to do. So the server needs to allow them to do that. So what I want to do is make another custom event, do server run, we want to run on server and I'm going to go ahead and custom event server walk this is a very simplified way of doing all this but what we're asking here is this also needs to be run on server grab a hold of this and we are going to switch has authority Basically, we're saying that, okay, the client here has requested to, ah, oh, you asshole, has requested to um, adjust their, their walk speed to 800. We're going to allow them the authority to do that by saying client run right here. So we put that, which this is that. Well, then why couldn't you do all this? So, again, same thing here. Switch has authority. And on the authority executable pin, we want to client walk. So at this point, when we press the left shift key we're going to run all that by saying server run when we release it server walk best way to again to explain that is client or the server is saying hey I want to run I want to run server because it's asking the server can I run now Server says, yeah, whatever, you can go ahead and run. I'm giving you authority to run. So at this point, when I hit left shift, it's asking the server, does the client have permission to run? It's going around your asshole to get to your elbow. Um, but let's take a look at it. Again, walking, running, and it is working and it is replicating how do I know it's replicating? I'm actually looking at it on the other screen. So let me let me move this guy back over here so you can see a little bit of what's going on. Actually, let's do this and yeah, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna run this way. Server is on the left, by the way. Yay! We can sprint and then we can go back to walking again. And there was much rejoicing. It wakes. So that's how you had to go through, and this is the basics of setting up a multiplayer, yeah, multiplayer system for doing a simple task of running and walking. So I'm going to grab all those, hit C, and run or walk. 
And that is that. We'll throw it over here. Make it neat. I'll come back in and reorganize everything else later. But we've just replicated our first function. Yay! We now have the ability and I'm going to move the server back off the screen here. So as the client, we can now sprint and walk. We'll set up stamina and everything else later. But we have replicated our first functionality. I'm doing everything on, on the client, and I'm looking at it on the server screen. So, But it works. So just to show you here, I'm going to go over here to the server side and sprint and I'll come back over here walking sprinting walking so it works that's the kind of stuff you're gonna run into when you're trying to multiplayer replicate things and you're gonna have to replicate a lot of stuff so you start off with you make custom event called client do whatever the action is and then you do a server version. The client version is going to say, okay, this is what I want to do. The server ex um, uh, custom event says, okay, we are going to allow you client run, which is this. We're going to allow you to have authority. So whenever the player presses left shift, it's going to ask the server, does client have authority to adjust their run speed up to 800. When they stop holding down that key, we need to ask the server, does the client have permission to adjust their walk speed back to 300? And that's basically the going around your asshole to get your elbow to get the multiplayer replication to work in its simplest form. Trust me, shooting makes it go a lot more complicated a lot more steps involved but that's all we need for now to get our multiplayer replication going now our map itself let's go ahead and hit save all make sure everything's good our map is pretty plain pretty simple um, I've got plenty of other videos showing these I'm just gonna throw a couple things in here just for shits and grins I'm gonna go to BSB geometry I'm gonna go to geometry linear stairs and I'm going to drag one into the map and I'm just going to drag this and see when I drag a BSP geometry into my map we're not going to do a whole map building or BSP geometry session here it has that look to it however if you go to your assets folder and your materials folder and select red or select a material now whenever I drag the linear stairs in here and drop them in the map they're gonna have that material automatically applied to them but what if you want the steps to have a different look to them I can select that face and then control left click and I can do this and this start selecting faces I'd select a couple at a time and if you get too many sometimes they'll deselect I'm going to select my blue material and I'm going to hit the arrow here and it's going to change automatically. So while it's doing its thing, I'm going to do this and this. And see, it automatically deselected. I don't know why it does that, but sometimes it just does it. Pisses you off. You get a bunch of them selected and all of a sudden it just automatically freaking deselects. So now. I'm just going to keep going, and I'm just going to select all these faces. You asshole. I'm just left-clicking on the face, control left click on each of these faces. And then hitting this to do that. Now, if I want to make a copy of these stairs now, and I'm going to select it again here. I unselected everything and selected it back again. I'm going to control C and control V and then I can rotate it around but you can see the pivot point is right there in that corner. So 
you're going to have a, a time to, to line it up. It's not going to be horrible. But like that. I'll show you one cool thing, and then we're going to finish off this video. We'll package it, and we'll do it in a standalone playable. I want to make this actually invisible. So I'm delete that one. I'm going to select my stair brush again. I'm going to control C, control V, and then I'm going to drag this one. Before I do anything else, I'm going to kind of scroll in a little bit. And as I start moving this new version, see how you get more orange outlines and you want it to look like that so that you have this new orange line goes from here to here. And then I'm going to come over here to brush type change it to subtractive it's going to make that disappear and then I'm going to take number of steps and I'm going to change that to 9 so it deletes one so now and I'm going to go back in here to select a viewport it's actually there but you notice the bottom is, is gray so how do we fix that? Well, we're going to lose our red and our blue and stuff like this, but I'm going to select one of these faces right here. And I'm going to come over here and select all adjacent surfaces. And I'm going to select red and there. So now when I uncheck that, the bottom of the stairs is red and the sides, the top still blue. So now when we get in here and look, we have a set of floating stairs that we can walk underneath if we were short enough. And do they work? Yes. Weird collision issue, but you know. So now I can take both of these, Control C, Control V, and then let's go ahead and rotate that around to 180. Grab this. And do that. Let's actually move them next to each other so that we can get them lined up just right. There, our first feature on the map. If we want to make it taller so we can walk underneath it, that's fine. But Again, we're not worried about all that. We're just trying to get something on our map just to, to interact with. This is our first game. We're a cowboy. And, yes, lovely. You could set up the collisions, or you can make the stairs taller where you could walk underneath. Uh, if you wanted to make the stairs taller, which I'm going to go ahead and grab all four of these. I don't want them. Now, I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to have my red selected. Drag my stairs in here. So we know that that's not big enough. We want to go ahead and change the number of steps to 15. And I want to kind of even this up on the map a little bit. I know it's 200 wide, so negative 100 is going to kind of split it up in the middle of the map that way. And then I'm going to Control C and Control V. Do like I did before. Do it to there. Change that to one step less. In this case, it's going to be 14. Change it from additive to subtractive. And now I'm going to select both of them. Control C, Control V. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 180. And Let's drag it over and there we go. Now I got some taller stairs and we can walk underneath those guys. So we now have floating stairs and there was much rejoicing. I mean, you could spread them farther apart and put a top ledge on it. You can do whatever the hell you want to do. I just wanted something in here. So now, I am going to come back over here, 
go to file I know that everything else is already set up in here I want a package project Windows 64-bit it's going to come up here I need to go and find the folder and we are using my first game it's alphabetical order dumbass in your folders um, my first game select folder and now if you show output log you're gonna see other colors happening now we got green and you might even see red occasionally or even yellow me lucky the coffee it's gonna take a little bit longer um, but no problem this is going to make a game that we can actually play and share with our friends and be able to have a multiplayer game just like that. Yeah, sure, there's no shooting, no crouching, no guns, no death and destruction and mayhem, but you know what? you got to start somewhere. We've started off by creating our concept for our game and then getting ourselves kind of organized, familiar with what we're doing, and now we've created our first multiplayer-capable test version of our first iteration of our game or whatever you know you got the ability to actually go in there multiplayer now and share now you are going to run into one issue if you haven't set up this already before and I'm just reminded by this Microsoft Visual Studio 2017 you're going to need Visual Studio installed don't worry it's free just Google it no problem when you're packaging your project, you're going to need it. So go ahead and get it. 2017 is fine. Whatever version you get is fine. I've got 2017. Um, it's working just fine. Um, you just need to have the latest version of, of um, Visual Studio installed. Google it, download it, install it, get the free version. Everything's good to go forgot to mention that in other videos and I didn't think about that until packaging up this but you do need Visual Studio installed and plenty of damn hard drive space it just for some reason this seems to consume more hard drive space than it should so you can see yellow there something about steam not enabled or whatever don't worry it's fine it works it'll be okay missing something no nope, don't worry about it it's fine if you sit here and stress looking at this right here you'll lose your mind sometimes you might even see some red pop up because it's trying to find something to do with Apple whatever and um, yeah, fuck Apple products sorry but um, I don't support a any Apple product uh oh build successful we did it oh no it worked how terrible so we can close that and I'm just gonna make sure I did a save all I'm gonna um, minimize again you can never save too many frickin' times I promise. Now we look in our folder. We got that Windows No Editor folder bullshit again. So you want to make sure you select everything in inside the Windows No Editor folder and move it to the root of your folder. And come back over here, select your Windows No Editor, delete the dog shit out of it, go away. We don't like you. Now what's going to happen is when you run this, you're going to need to make sure you have clearance through your firewall so um, run it and I get a Windows security alert allow access promise it's not some virus bullshit I'm too lazy to make viruses so you got all your your steam stuff there was the, the pop-up in the bottom right your top right you got your username and avatar if you don't see those then you don't have steam running it will say go connect to steam dummy so now if I want to go single player that's great I'm gonna host a multiplayer and I'm gonna create this game you can't join 
me and hit make and there we go there was much rejoicing I'm walking super slow but I can hold down the shift key and I can sprint yeehaw I'm a cowboy and our jump has been neutered and our walk speed has been neutered but we can hit the shift key and sprint yeehaw now you can also set it up that while sprinting you can set a variable is sprinting to true or is running to true and then you can turn up your jump again to where you, when you're running you can jump higher and longer and harder and faster and whatever so yeah rejoice in the fact you have your first game it is working it is multiplayer it is replicated even the sprinting and walking speed everything is all replicated everything is lovely no problems so rejoice you have just created and packaged your first game and now you're ready to start looking at other more complicated features like well, I don't know applying damage taking damage whatever and um, jump on discord and we'll talk about this um, I am going to be also adding in later to this project if you guys want me to the Cindy Studios assets for um, the Frontier and the the Western pack I think would be great for a cowboy game or I can keep this completely neutered and only have the UE4 mannequin my fancy cowboy hat and things that you can obtain for free beyond my multiplayer template you guys need to let me know get with me on discord and we will go from there I'm gonna end this video now and um, Wednesday we'll definitely pick up on these uh, again probably do two or three streams on Wednesday starting about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and again if you want to get the simple multiplayer steam template get with me on my discord channel and say hey I want to buy it I want to help support you and thank you for for creating content that's lame and pathetic I mean really awesome and um you know the link to PayPal is in the description of the video $20 US currency is enough thank you for me per person to allow me to keep doing these videos if I'm not getting any sales from this or if nobody else is showing any interest in us on discord then I'm gonna do like I do with some of my other ones and I'm just gonna drop the series it's all based on what you guys want so you guys need to get with me on discord and say hey keep on going we like it or it's shit go jump in a river whatever you guys gotta let me know alright guys thanks for watching and we will see you soon